Welcome, pilots to part 5 of the Urination Guide for War Thunder. In this final episode, we'll be going over Sweden and Israel. The previous episodes are linked below if you haven't watched them yet. Sweden, a fan favorite for many, a bewilderment to others. The Swedish Air Tree can be described as asymmetrical due to the strange looking aircraft and the overall structure of the tree. Containing a Finnish subtree as well, Sweden is certainly one of the more interesting nations in the game. Is it worth a shot? Let's find out. The Swedish Air Tree consists of four lines, that being a fighter line, a strike aircraft line, a light bomber line and a Finnish line. No, not like that. There we go. In the early stages, the tree is like most other nations, but at the late props and early jets, the designs get a bit strange. They do have some competent top tier jets though, with the Drakens, Wiggins and the Gripen. The strike aircraft line is also quite peculiar. After tier 1, all of the planes in the line are pretty much copy pasted fighters. The only difference is that they can carry ordnance. Speaking of copy and paste, guess what? The entirety of the Finnish air tree is just reskinned and slightly modified foreign planes. This can be both a blessing and a curse, but we'll get to that later. For now though, let's start at tiers 1 and 2. As mentioned earlier, the start of the Swedish air tree is nothing special, with some biplanes and early monoplanes. Tier 2 is where things start to improve though. In the fighter line you'll find the J20, an export variant of the RE2000. As you'd expect, this plane performs exactly like its Italian counterpart, with a nimble but fragile design. Dogfights are its specialty, but the guns will leave much to be desired. Next up, in the light bomber line, you'll find the B-18A and the Finnish Junkers 88. Both of these planes are considered bombers, but they vary in their playstyles. The B-18 is a surprisingly fast tactical bomber, while also having interceptor capabilities. Due to its lackluster payload and limited defensive weapons, it's best used as a high-speed ground attacker. With its very powerful engines, this should be relatively easy. The Junkers 88 is better suited against bases in air battles though, since its flight performance isn't that great. Like the B-18 though, it is pretty fast for a bomber, so get to your target, drop your payload and rush back to friendly territory. And lastly, in the finish line, we have the imported F2A1 Buffalo and the Hurricane Mark 1. They both perform like you'd expect, great maneuverability, not much speed and an overall fragile design. The Hurricane does have a very notable feature, that being its 8 7.7mm Browning machine guns. While not the most powerful, the sheer number of these guns can melt pretty much anything at this tier. Next up are tiers 3 and 4, featuring some very unique, albeit unconventional designs. First is the fighter line with the domestic J-22s and J-21s. The J-22s are decent medium to low altitude fighters with some really good agility, top speeds and firepower. Speaking of, these two don't feature any cannons, instead having an 8mm and 13.2mm machine gun as light and heavy firepower respectively. While they're not as powerful as 20 mils, the 13.2s can still deal lots of damage. Overall, the J-22s are decent fighters if used in the right environment. The same can't be said about the J-21s though. These things are pretty much the definition of mediocre. They can't turn at all, their climb rates are bad, and they can't fly very fast either. The only good thing about them is their firepower. With a 20mm and four 13.2s mounted on the nose, which can be quite deadly. If for some reason you wanna play them, you should focus on head-ons and easy prey like light bombers. Anything with a decent flight performance will tear you to shreds, so either keep close to allies or play passively. The attacker variant is sort of viable for ground RB with up to 600 kilograms of bombs or 8 rockets. Overall, these pusher props are definitely not the best. You're better off skipping them and using the other planes at these tiers. Speaking of, next up is the light bomber line with the B-18B and the T-18B. 
these two are much better CAS than the A21A is, featuring up to 12,000 kilograms of bombs and 12 rockets. The T-18 can also carry a torpedo. Along with this, these two also have great top speeds and decent maneuverability for their roles. After they've dumped their payload, they can be used like heavy fighters, protecting the skies from enemy planes. If you need some close air support for a mid-tier ground RB, make sure to give either of these a shot. And lastly, in the finish line, we have some actual competent fighters with the J-26 and BF-109G. The J-26 is a Swedish P-51D and unsurprisingly, it performs like any other Mustang. Plenty of firepower, not much agility and great top speed. Booming and zooming is the obvious choice with this one, so climb high and dive on enemies below you. The BF-109 G2 performs similarly, but with a better climb rate, better maneuverability and stronger weapons. Turn fighting is still not advised though, so stick to boom and zoom. With the option to carry two 20mm gun pods as well, you can destroy any plane you come across. Now we reach tiers 5 and 6 featuring the early jets. In the fighter line we have the J21RA, the J29s and the J32. The J21RA is just the J21 with a jet engine instead of the pusher prop configuration. It somehow manages to be worse than its predecessor, replacing the 13.2s with 450 cals and a 20 mil. While the jet engine might seem enticing, it's still a very slow plane and its climb rate is still pretty bad. Luckily, the next plane in the line is better, that being the J29. The flying barrel features powerful guns as well as a decent top speed. However, getting up to that speed takes a while. Turn fighting with this thing will lead to a lot of energy bleeding, so your best bet is boom and zoom tactics. The J29F improves on the A variant with a much needed afterburner as well as two RB24 missiles which perform identically to the A9B. While they're not the most competitive aircraft, they can be quite useful as support planes. And the last of the bunch is the J32B. This plane is comparable to the British Hunter. It's got a strong engine, very devastating firepower, but it can't turn very well. With the four RB24s and four 30 mils, you can wipe out anything in your path. The plane has a great top speed and acceleration thanks to its afterburner, so make use of it. Interception or booming and zooming is a solid choice. Should you get attacked though, you are quite vulnerable as the J32B is a rather large target, it doesn't have the best agility and most importantly it lacks countermeasures. Use it carefully though and you should rack up a nice amount of kills. Next up is the Strike Aircraft line, which features the exact same aircraft we mentioned before, but with payload options. The A21RB can carry a measly 10 rockets, the A29B can carry up to 24 rockets, and the A32A can carry a wide range of bombs and rockets, although it lacks air-to-air -air missiles. None of these planes excel in ground striking though, so you should instead focus on the next line. Speaking of, here we are in the light bomber line, which turns into a strike aircraft line. It starts pretty slow with the SK-60B, but it gets much better with the Saab 105G. The SK can't carry much payload, unlike the famous YouTuber that goes by the same name. You are forced to choose between two 30mm gun pods and two air-to-ground missiles, with the option to carry some rockets on top of both. While it is decently maneuverable, it's very slow, so you're better off sticking with the gun pods and playing as a support fighter. The Saab 105G is a much better strike aircraft though, featuring up to 4000 pounds of bombs, a decent amount of rockets, air-to-air -air missiles, as well as the aforementioned gun pods. It is still quite a slow aircraft and with a full loadout you'll be a very easy target for enemies. After you drop said payload though, the Saab 105 can be a pretty good support fighter thanks to its decent maneuverability. 
and lastly the finish line with the A28B and the J34 which is a vampire and a hunter respectively. These two perform pretty much exactly like their British counterparts. The A29 having a great turn rate but a weak engine while the J34 having the exact opposite. Firepower on both is quite destructive on the A28 especially so you'll have no trouble in that regard. If you've played British jets before these two will make you feel at home. And now we reach tier 7 and 8, probably the most popular part of the Swedish air tree. In the first fighter line we have the infamous jet fighters like the Draken, Wigen and Gripen. The playstyles of these four are, for the most part, pretty similar. They all feature delta wings which can let them turn very sharply at the cost of almost all their speed. In one-on-one -on -one engagements this can prove very useful, but against multiple enemies it can be quite dangerous. Thankfully, the engines on all these planes are pretty solid, so regaining lost energy shouldn't take too long. As for armament, they all feature the 30mm Orkan cannon, with the exception of the Gripen, which features a 27mm. The 30 mils have quite low velocities, and their placement on the wings and belly can also be confusing when trying to land a shot. Their ammo counts are rather limited as well. Thankfully though, they all feature decent missiles with export variants of the AIM-9B, P, L and M variants, as well as the Sky Flash. They can all carry quite a large number of them as well, which is definitely useful. Performance-wise, each variant improves on the one before it with better engines, firepower and technology. The Gripen especially is one of the best fighters in the game, with performances similar to the F-16. It's safe to say that Sweden definitely has some of the most competent top tier jets in the game and will continue to do so for quite some time. In the strike aircraft line you'll find more of the same with ordnance carrying variants of the fighters. On top of all the air to air missiles the AJ and AJS-37 can carry bombs, rockets and air to ground guided missiles. That being said though, the Gripen pretty much blows both of these out of the water, both in terms of performance and ordnance, so you might as well use that instead. And lastly in the finish line we have the MiG-21 BIS. Like the Soviet variant, this plane is extremely fast, can turn very sharply and climb at an impressive rate. Turning too much will bleed energy quite fast though, and combined with its poor low speed maneuverability, this can be a recipe for disaster. For weapons, the Fishbed features up to 6 R60 MK missiles, which are quite potent. If you've played the Soviet 3 and are looking for something similar, this is the plane for you. Now we reach the pros and cons. Some of the best parts about the Swedish Air 3 are the top tier jets. The Draken, Wiggins and the Gripen are some of the most competitive fighters in the game. Getting up there however can be quite a pain due to the planes at tiers 4 through 6. Thankfully the finish line has a strong lineup of foreign planes which can help you get through the tree. Not so thankfully though, if you have played some of the other nations before playing Sweden, they can be a bit boring since the entire line is nothing but copy and paste. Speaking of copy and paste, the strike aircraft line suffers pretty badly from this. From tier 4 onwards, the entire line is nothing but clones of fighters with some lackluster ordnance choices. Half the line is between tiers 4 and 6 as well, which makes those tiers even more hellish to get through. If you are in the market for some ground strikers though, the light bomber line can be quite useful, featuring some solid ground attackers up until tier 5. Now, for the conclusion, the Swedish Air 3 is probably not what you'd call beginner friendly. While the earlier fighters aren't half bad, the aforementioned late props and early jet aircraft can be devastating for any newer players. As for roles, the Swedish Air 3 it doesn't really have all that much going for it. Air superiority is pretty lackluster until top tier and there are only a handful of bombers and high altitude fighters in the tree. Ground striking is also rather limited with limited payloads on the close air support and an overall lack of close air support planes until the higher tiers. 
As for rolls, like it's been repeated many times now, the early tiers are pretty trash, but the jets at rank 7 and 8 are some of the best. And lastly, should you play the Swedish Air 3? If you're a beginner, it's not the best choice. If you're looking for a new nation to grind through, it's a decent choice. Like the French Air 3, if you can manage to grind to the top, you'll get your hands on some very powerful toys. And if you just wanna have some fun, it's not really a great choice, unless you're playing the top tier models. My personal recommendations for uh, what you should maybe focus on playing once you get there is the Finnish BF-109s and the Vigans. Now, this is my rendition of uh, the Swedish Air 3, my opinion of it. It's been fun. Jovel out. The Israeli Air Tree is the newest and smallest to be added to the game. Like the Chinese tree, it mostly consists of foreign designs, mainly American, British, and French. The tree is unique in one aspect though, it starts from tier 4, which can make getting to top tier much faster. Is it worth playing? Let's take a look. The overall structure of the tree is pretty interesting. It only has three lines, with two fighter lines and a bomber line. While there's no dedicated ground support line, almost all the planes at tier 6 and above have plenty of payload options. The quote-unquote bomber line also features jet fighters in the second half. All these factors combined lead to an aggressive fighter striker placed out at higher tiers, but first up is tier 4. In the first fighter line, you'll find the Spitfire Mark 9C and the Mark 9CW. These two are your run-of-the-mill Spitfires, excellent maneuverability, good climb rates, and decent armament. Turn fighting is obviously their strong suit, and aside from Japanese fighters, you can easily outturn any other plane you face. Their ammo count is low though, and their performance at high altitudes isn't the best. Play aggressively, lure enemies into dogfights, and wipe them out. Next up is the second fighter line with the Sakin and the P-51D20. The Sakin is a modified BF-09 with almost none of the good features the 109 has. It doesn't have a good climb or turn rate, but its weapons are pretty decent. You're better off just using the Mustang though. Much like the American version, the D-20 variant of the P-51 is a competent aircraft with a great engine, lots of firepower, and surprisingly decent payload options. Avoid turn fighting though, since its agility isn't the best. It excels as a boom and zoomer, and with its plentiful 50 cals, you can take care of enemies with ease. And lastly the bomber line with the B-17G. The Flying Fortress features a decent ordnance with plenty of defensive turrets and a sturdy airframe. It's a pretty reliable bomber, so give it a shot if that's what you're looking for. Now it's time for tiers 5 and 6 for the early jets. The first half of the first fire line consists of meteors with the NF-13 and the F-8 variants. Like their British counterparts, these planes are good medium to low altitude fighters. With a decent climb rate, top speed, and firepower, they can be effective if used properly. The guns on the NF-13 are quite hard to aim though, due to their placement on the wings. In the second half of the line on tier 6, you'll find some French exports with a Mystere and the Sombite, which is a Super Mystere B2. These two are both quite versatile, with some powerful weapons, payload options, and decent flight performances. While not the best at air-to-air -air combat, they can be decent support fighters. For ordnance, they can carry up to 2 tons of bombs and some powerful heat rockets. The Sambat also features a Shafir missile, which is similar to the AIM-9B. Overall, these two jets are decent multi-role fighters, so both air and ground battles are viable options. In the second fighter line, you'll find the MD-450B, the A4H, and the IE-8, which is an upgraded A4. The Oregon is similar to the Mysteres, with not the best flight performance but being a decent support fighter. The A4s, on the other hand, are strike aircraft, capable of carrying up to 6,000 pounds of bombs, a massive amount of rockets, gun pods, as well as air-to-ground and air-to-air -air missiles in the IE-8. With these two, air battles are sort of viable, as long as you stay in the support role. Ground battles are where they shine though, so if you need some cast, make sure to give them a shot. And lastly in the bomber line we have the Votor 2A. Much like its French counterpart, the Votor is a very fast bomber with some decent ordnance, that being more than 3 tons of bombs. It also carries 4 def 30 mils as well as the option to carry the aforementioned Shafir missile. While it lacks any defensive measures, it is still an overall great jet bomber. And finally, we reach tier 7 and 8. At these ranks, you'll find some of the best top tier jets from both the USA and France. To keep things simple, we'll go over the models of planes instead of the lines. So, to start it off, we have the French jets with the Shahak, the Nechir, and the Kefir C7. These three planes are either renamed or modified versions of the Mirage 3 and the Mirage 5. They all perform similarly to their French counterparts with great maneuverability, powerful engines, and strong armament. The Shahak and Nechir feature the Shafir to a missile, which is comparable to an uncaged AIM-9D. They can only carry a maximum of two of them, though, and more importantly, they have no countermeasures. This can be detrimental at this battle rating, so check your surroundings at all times. Luckily, the Kafir C7 does carry flares and chaff, albeit in small numbers, and it can also carry the Python 3 missile, which is quite competitive. The latter of the two can also carry a pretty decent payload of up to 6.5k pounds, so it can also use it in ground striking missions. They are pretty versatile for both air and ground battles, so they're definitely worth checking out. 
Next up are the Phantoms in the form of the Karnas and the Karnas 2000. Much like any other Phantom, these two are pretty much flying bricks with a massive arsenal of ordnance. They can carry up to 14,000 pounds of bombs, a large amount of rockets, air to ground missiles, laser guided bombs, and plenty of AAMs. They are quite big and heavy though, so their maneuverability isn't something you should rely on. They're great for ground striking, so ground RB is a safe bet. And lastly are the F-16s and the F-15, with the Nets, Barak-2, and Bas. Like all the other fighting Falcons, the Israeli variants of the F-16 are some of the most competent jets in the game, with great engines, maneuverability, and armament. They can also carry some of the best missiles in the game as well, with Python 3s, AIM-9Ls, and the AIM-9M on the second variant. Now, let me be clear, while the Barak-2 is one of the most advanced variants of the F-16 in game, it's also pretty heavy, so dogfighting isn't as good as its predecessor. Speaking of heavy, the F-15 is similar in that regard. The Bas is essentially a more modern Phantom, with a great engine, powerful armament, but a worse term than the F-16. Its wings are also pretty fragile, so avoid sharp turns. The support rule fits it best, although it can handle the occasional dogfight. If ground battles are more your speed, all these planes have a big range of payload options, with the most notable being the Barak with its 8 laser guided bombs. Overall, all 3 of these planes are top national t roll fighters, and you can easily rack up kills with any one of them, whether in air or ground battles. Now it's time for the pros and cons. The most obvious pro of the Israeli air tree is its size. Because it starts from tier 4, reaching tower tier is going to be much quicker than other nations. Another pro is that the tree contains some really good strike aircraft like the A4s, the Phantoms, and the Mirage 5. If you're also grinding the tank tree, this can be very useful. And speaking of American planes, the Israeli tank tree at top tier is pretty much America light, so whenever they get a shiny new top tier jet, there's a high chance it'll get copied over here as well. But speaking of copy paste, that's the most blatant con of the tree. Almost every single plane is just a reskin or a slight modification from other countries. If you're looking for something fresh, you'd best look elsewhere. This can be a sort of pro depending on your view though, as you get a taste for both French and American jets. While the top tier models are pretty good, the jets at tier 5 are pretty lackluster. The Meteors in Oregon are better off as support fighters, so you'll have to endure the passive playstyle. And now, the conclusion. The Israeli air tree is probably not the best choice for beginners. Since there are no early tiers, you're immediately thrown into higher tier air combat, and you'll be facing more skilled opponents. As for the roles, here they are. Air supremacy and ground striking are the two strongest ones. Bombing is viable with some of the fighters and attackers, while interception isn't the best. For the ranks, the tree starts off strong with the Spitfires and the Mustang, then falls off with the early jets at tier 5, and then picks back up at tier 6, and only gets better as the tree goes on. And now, for one last time, should you play the Israeli air tree? If you're a beginner, no. While jumping straight to tier 4 might seem enticing, you'll be lacking the skills you gradually pick up between tiers 1 and 3. If you're looking for a new ninja to grind, it's also not that great of a choice. Like I previously mentioned, the majority of the tree is copy and paste, mainly from America and France. If you haven't played either, it can be pretty enjoyable, but otherwise, there are more interesting nations to pick. And if you're just looking to have some fun, it's an alright choice, but you might as well play America or France. Some recommendations are the Ayit and the F-16s.